everyone, it's DuckFairy07. Today we are playing Breakout Zoo. I had a bunch of breakout builds in the past on my channel. I was always impressed with this card in Zoo. Its ability to hit Territorial Cowl, it's just amazing. And Inti is also a good piece in this build. Also having a card that digs deep to find a Sion when you have Leyland the Guild Pact on the field can also win you a bunch of games. Okay, so I was always impressed with this breakout out build uh, it's never lived up to be the most uh, popular uh, way to play zoo but uh, there is a new incentive to play breakout in zoo and that is psychic frog i already played this uh, card in a lot of different uh, zoo builds but it's definitely best in this one when you can find it with the breakout on turn two or later and just give it haste immediately uh, and this is a vasive creature that can grow and it fits very well in this strategy so it can immediately draw your card and then hit uh, keep drawing cards starting as early as turn two that is like <laughs> psychic frog on steroids it's really really strong first time i played breakout on turn two hit frog uh, give it haste immediately deal damage and draw a card oh my i said oh my god this is broken it because it really is it felt super strong and uh, after you uh, start drawing cards and then you can grow it, uh, dodge uh, like damage based removal like Gavanic Discharge, Lightning Bolt, Flage and just keep drawing cards so early and also Kavu is such a strong hit with Breakout too. Breakout becomes like really really beautiful strong piece uh, in this build and uh, okay so uh, other than that i uh, got regular stuff so uh, lately because of mostly because of the dimir frog tide deck i uh, i tried I, I think prismatic ending just got a lot better uh, in the meta game overall and the psychic frog is a big reason to play ending in this build so that is why i uh, decided to go for uh, 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 split uh, two endings, two bolts in Tribal Flames build. I still play mostly uh, bolts because there we got flames, uh, which can usually also kill frog in most situations or help you uh, like Tribal Flames plus bolt if uh, Tribal Flame is not needed. But that build has a lot, has more um, options. So uh, I think in this one, having only binding that kills frog. Can be weak so i want to have a split between lightning bolt some instant speed removal two bolts and some sorcery speed removal to kill that frog also exile flage uh, it's a very useful very good card right now okay so in the one drop slot we got the ragavans and wild necattles um and uh, in the two drop slots we got cowls psychic frog absolutely best break out hits and we got two inties and uh, this uh, inti plays very well with both psychic frog and territorial cow when they discard the card you just kind of exile card for free with inti it's also pretty decent uh, breakout hit i would say third best available uh, to drop uh, to currently okay so let's talk about matt a lot of players immediately when they see this deck they ask about matt of the breakout in this build okay so overall uh matt for hitting any creature in this deck is 96 about 96 percent that is really high so you're basically almost guaranteed to uh, not breaking you will always hit a creature and uh Sometimes that creature will be Scion and you will not be able to put it on the battlefield. But keep in mind that finding Scion is often uh, better than finding anything uh, over here. If you have Leyland of the Guild Pact uh, on the field already because Scion combo is really really strong. And uh, especially if you play this on turn 4 and then find Scion and put it in hand and immediately played for two mana uh, it can be very very uh, decisive uh, uh, game winning and so uh, also we got these 10 10 two drop hits okay so what are the chances of hitting uh, putting any creature uh, in the battlefield uh, the chance to do uh, to hit a one drop or a two drop is currently with this exact build about 88 percent that is also very good chance of not breaking and that is very important so you have 88 percent chance to hit one drop or two drop 
and I think they, these are very good odds when you combine that with 96% of hitting anything that's pretty good because uh, as I said already explained Scion is often very good hit and you will often pick Scion even if you have multiple uh, hits available uh, I would say the worst hit uh, to hit of the breakout is Flage but uh, it, it's better than uh, sometimes if you find just that which is not very uh, often it will be again better than nothing and sometimes you, we all know that flage wins games so if you find flage put it in hand it's really not that bad but as i already explained um, there's 88% uh, of hitting one drop or a two drop that's already too high if you exclude flage and uh, count scion uh, which is also very good breakout hit often that uh, then you're again above 90% chances uh, of uh, hitting well with breakout so uh, uh, I would say the mat of the breakout in this build is very very good okay on the sideboard we got some stubborn denials uh, uh, because of the breakout I didn't uh, have uh, breakout demands uh, a certain number of creatures being played so I didn't have the place for it in the main but there are four in the sideboard and three consigned to memories consigned to memories has been very good uh, this can potentially be um, also uh, like obsidian charm because obs consign is mostly a card you board in Eldrazi matchup but yeah uh, charm can do a good job there too so uh, but uh, consign has been uh, is a more versatile card good against uh, other decks so i choose to play that okay we got pyroclasm good against energy additional removal in the chain to the rocks molten collapse and the graveyard hate like soul guide lantern and of course giganta so that is it that is the entire deck let's go now check out the gameplay okay so um uh, this was a trophy league a very very strong uh, performance by deck so let's uh, see how it all went okay my opponent is playing first starting with uh, ancient steerings and finding a patchwork automaton so they're playing uh, hardened scales that is definitely matchup i didn't see for some time okay uh, i start uh, second with a uh, cuttle and uh, I went for a steam vents here and uh, breakout immediately finding frog that is definitely a um, desirable find here opponent decides to block with patchwork that's okay by me uh, and uh, it's uh, the frog is even better here because uh, you can use it to discard flage which is like, just phenomenal Okay, so as, unfortunately, as we can see here, opponent plays Agatha Sokalon, removes my flage immediately from the yard. If they didn't do that, I would have a uh, Arena of Glory uh, in my hand and f f I could escape flage next turn. Also, Psychic Frog can help you discard cards to play your, uh, psych to play your flage uh, on curve, which can often be uh, very, very strong as well. Okay, so we can I see here opponent uh, takes Ballista, so with Ballista they have a kill here, so I have to take the Agatha Soul Cauldron in response, because uh, uh, Patchwork has um, Ward 2. Okay, so here I go uh, attack with uh, both creatures, opponent puts more counters on Patchwork, it is now 7-7. So I have to uh, I have to block it with frog if they go for the attack, and I have little damage uh, in swing back. I just need to put a giganta to hand to find little. So maybe there's a chance you could some could get confused here and not see the little. But don't forget about giganta. If not for giganta, I would not have little here. I would have to stay back with Nakatel and give my opponent a chance to top deck something. Uh, this way I was able to bolt uh, Inkmot and go in for 8 damage even if they use the Welding Jar, the Regenerating taps the creature so that's a little uh, f uh, for a win. Ok so let's check out game 2 and uh, yeah sideboarding plan against Pyroclasm. Unfortunately for uh, Hardened Scales uh, metagame is not really 
um, good for uh, scales because there is a lot of incidental hate even here I have like prismatic endings I have a chain to the rocks uh, uh, there is not much actually like artifact enchantment hate but there is a graveyard hate uh, that is played against a flage like soul guide lantern can be very useful and uh, the exile effects uh, also uh, also wrath of the skies in uh, jeska energy is just terrible for the deck Okay, let's. As we can see here, opponent is um, using the welding jar. I go uh, with psychic frog for a damage, and again uh, play the second frog. Uh, I, it's a small risk here, letting them uh, find a good uh, good card of the top. But now I'm just in a very good situation. Uh, I decide to take their hangerback walker. Uh, now they use a hangerback. I have a consign. I can counter these abilities if needed. So I take a risky road here and decide to discard my entire hand on this frog. And uh, I discard entire hand on this frog and uh, uh, I kill their uh, automaton. Uh, but they were able to put counters on the ozolith. They were able to put counters on Ozali to make one big uh, Inkmot Nexus. And again I block with a frog and discard my entire hand to kill the Nexus. This puts 7 minus counters on my uh, on my frog but it doesn't matter. I can still make it 1-2 and still go in for damage. Continue drawing cards. Take their, uh, take their uh, Ozali which was their only chance at this point. And uh, yeah, that was the match uh, opponent concedes. Okay, let's check out match two. Okay, so this is not a super great starting hand, but I'm playing second and today we have cards like uh, uh, survey lens and survey lens make games so so much easier uh, where um, you can see here again I find uh, two uh, two matches in a row in game one I find a psychic frog uh, on turn two with breakout and that is like this very strong amazing play we can see here opponent playing Invasion of Gobakan. Uh, that's kind of an interesting tech for a Boros energy deck, but pretty useless in this position. And yeah, there it is. Even without Leyline, still my frog has Hexproof and Lifelink, which is like terrible for them, almost unwillingable. But with Leyline, it also has like... Uh, uh, my Scion has all these abilities, Hexproof, Lifelink, Trample, Vigilance, so there's no no chance of uh, returning from this one, uh, especially with the second frog, frog in hand. So that is very very quick game one here, opponent concedes. Okay, let's check out the side sideboarding plan against the Boros Energy with a couple of invasions of Gobakan tech. Okay, so we, I, we can see here that... Um, I only find found space to put in a couple of uh, uh, Paroclasms in. Uh, nothing much else, just uh, two Ragavans out, uh, one Inti, and yeah, mostly for Paroclasms. You can see here again opponent. Uh, opponent, uh, I didn't block this time because I didn't want them to uh, bolt, um, uh, bolt my Flage in after first strike. Okay, but uh, I went in with Flage, uh, with the, sorry, with the Frog, draw a card, then play uh, Ragavan, play Territorial Kavo, and now it's a race, opponent needs some good stuff. They find uh, Ajani. They find Ajani, go in uh, with just Ocelot. Yeah, maybe, maybe I should, yeah, I, I think I should have definitely... Uh, 
Nah, there's no point. Maybe I could have uh, blocked here, but then a Johnny flips. Yeah, it's it's not. It, I don't think it's a good a good idea. Okay, now I have a removal, so now I can probably afford just. Um, I can probably afford uh, uh, to uh, let them try flip a Johnny because I can I can have leyline binding and I am doing this uh, flage uh, sorry this inti abilities and uh, yeah now I can just play the binding take their a Johnny and um, pass the turn now it's a race uh, I have uh, cow attacking psychic frog attacking drawing card. I have some blockers, but my opponent finds a goblin bombardment, and that is really, really bad news for me. Extremely bad news. Goblin bombardment in a situation like this, there's just. Maybe I should have just discarded all uh, both of my cows here. Just try to dig for the pyroclasm. That was, I think, my only uh, chance here. Yeah, I think uh, I think that was the way. Okay, so uh, I go in with Soul Guide Lantern, draw a card from the Soul Guide Lantern, discard a card with Kavu, uh, draw another card, deal damage with Psychic Frog, draw another card, and uh, there it is, Pyroclasm on the top. If I discarded a second Kavu with Inti, I would actually find it, but I would still like lose. Uh, because they still have a bombardment and a lot of damage so it wouldn't really matter but yeah it was it was close i needed maybe like a flage to stabilize okay so here um i keep uh, this is actually a decent hand uh, since i'm playing first i can go like a turn two psychic uh, cyano jaco turn three breakout uh, if I play it like that and find um, if I play it like that and find a psychic frog uh, with it, then it would already have lifelink and hexproof, which is very good. Okay, so we can hear opponent played uh, double guide of souls and also pride that is like really strong. And uh, I decided to take both of their guides. That was really important here. Uh, because Sion of Draco uh, successfully blocked their uh, Ocelot Pride, they were not able to trigger it, and uh, I was able to go for the ley line, give, put Sion combo on the field, and yeah, that was after that. It was I also have a basic, so Blood Moon doesn't really bother me here. It was just a super super good situation for me here, and as you can see here in this situation, I find I had Valnek Cattle and Sion Draco, but since I have Leyline of the Guild Pact on the field, I really want the Sion of Draco, so I find another one and put it here and play it, and it's also just a very good find. Often uh, when you either have Leyline of the Guild Pact in hand or on the battlefield, uh, finding it will be useful. Okay, so that is it. That is the match against Boros Energy. Let's check out match 3. Okay, so in the match 3, playing second again. And uh, yeah, this time it was uh, not a keepable starting hand and not very good uh, mulligan to 6. But again, when you have a... Uh, uh, when you have uh, access to the survey land, uh, it's a really, really meaningful land for uh, for Domain Zoo. Deck where every every draw really matters a lot, and uh, just finding the right uh, draw from the top is very, uh, very uh, strong. In this situation, uh, I only had Wild Cattle in hand, which is not very good uh, against uh, in the Zoo Mirror. But uh, yeah, I was thanks to the Thundering Falls, I was able to find the prismatic ending from the top, kill their cow immediately, which was definitely the key in this situation. Okay, so here opponent uh, has a Ren of Glory and hastes their cow, uh, dealing five. Uh, that's okay since uh, I have uh, I have binding there, but un unfortunately didn't work. 
uh, but uh, I have Leyland of the Guild Pact for the next turn, so I'm gladly taking a 5 here, going down on uh, 6, so hopefully opponent doesn't play uh, Tribal Flames this turn, there is low chance they will just play Tribal Flames uh, when I'm not on 5, so uh, I uh, fetch end of turn to find uh, missing land, uh, I go down to 5, then play the Leyland of the Guild Pact on my turn, and now if they don't have a Leyland Binding, um, I'm really really well positioned, so okay. So uh, my opponent uh, continues to attack with Kavu, trying to find that leyline binding that is their only way out. And actually, they found it, but uh, I still decide to risk uh, uh, trade here with Sion because yeah, if they have leyline, they have it. But yeah, Kavu is like a really really strong piece, and uh, I decide to trade with Sion there. And uh, if they didn't find it, I would just uh, gain life and uh, kill Kao for free. So uh, it was a good thing and uh, I con was able to continue to attack with Valna Cattle and uh, Ragavan Dash, putting my opponent down to 4, so they did not have a solution. And yeah, that was the win. Uh, let's check out game 2. Okay, let's also check out the sideboarding plan uh, for the mirror. Okay, so we can see here that uh, bolts go out, uh, usually a zoo, most of the decks don't play Brawler, so there is less reason to play a bolt in the mirror, and I have some better removal on the side, and I have Flage to kill their three toughness creatures anyway, so I don't think the bolt is very good. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, here I was able to take th take their uh, Kavu on turn one, play my Kavu on turn two, and I'm already in such a such a strong position here. In the upkeep, I go for um, in the upkeep, I go for a surveil. Uh, trade with Kavus. Uh, this is good. I think this is good for me because I am uh, playing uh, first. Uh, I'm kind of the attacker here and I am uh, the one putting threats on the field and here I decide to uh, yeah I have I was able to use the frog to discard the card in the graveyard to help me escape Flage immediately and Flage Del kills a Brawler for free and I get to draw a card from Frog such a strong card and now I play a Cyan of Draco even without Lane of the Guild Pact. This still gives my guy lifelink uh, and um, uh, hexproof with Cyan of Draco. Even without Lane of the Guild Pact, it's a very strong combo. And here I cast uh, Cyan of Draco plus Breakout. My opponent concedes. So that is the match against uh, Domain Zoom Mirror. So let's now check the match 4. Okay, so in the match 4, uh, this time I was playing first and uh, I had uh, all the 2 drops, so uh, um, I just go for uh, Triumph there and then start probably with Cyano Jaco. Uh, since I'm playing against Mono Black, it seems, probably something like Necro, then I, I think I really want to start with Cyano Jaco because they have troubles killing the Cyan. Uh, I think the only card they can kill it with it is Soul Spike, which is a decent trade because they are like using three cards to kill it. Then I go for the second Scion, and since my opponent uh, did not play the Necro there, then I was able to like be in a really really strong position here. I discard the second Frog uh, since my Frog has Hexproof. I don't have to worry about it dying, and I deal damage with it. My opponent plays Bowmasters in response, I don't really care. Bowmaster is pretty bad against the zoo. Uh, they also go for the Totsies. That is all good news for me because uh, I want to deal enough damage uh, before they were able to play Necro or something like that. Uh, I um, attack with Frog and Sion putting them down on 3 life and now they have Necro Dominance. But yeah, that's not enough, and they can kill the Scion actually here. 
uh, but frog kills them next turn so that is game over i was able to be aggressive enough uh, partially thanks to the breakout again you could see like hitting the frog with breakout it feels like super super good i'm just very impressed by that play and it's it feels amazing every every time just it's simply just amazing play okay so here i go for in data trium and uh, i am expecting my opponents to play necrodominance on turn three that is what they usually do and uh, so that is why i'm holding stubborn denial plus uh, leyland binding uh, but yeah, my opponent is playing around a stubborn denial, so they did not want to play it uh, this turn. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm not like super high on holding the denial here, so I decided to just play the frog and hold the leyland binding because the thing I need to worry about is like necro dominance and the leyland binding just so cleanly deals with it. So if you just remove remove the necro dominance. Uh, before the end step it doesn't do anything so yeah uh, here now i can play uh, survey land put another stubborn denial in the graveyard i don't think i need a second one i can play inti again hold the leyland binding just a very very good position here opponent is able to uh, take one of the bindings actually triggers my uh, inti which is good for me uh, you can see here uh, I removed a couple of Fragavans. I removed a couple of Fragavans and a couple of uh, prismatic endings uh, fit in stubborn denials for this matchup. And now uh, I this time I tap my blue mana and leave the stubborn denial because I have ferocious. I have Cyanos Draco, so uh, it's hard for them to kill Cyanos Draco, plus I'm holding the Stubborn Denial, now I'm also holding uh, Leyland Binding, so it's pretty much easy game for me here, and now they tr I also can just haste Giganta next turn, my opponent plays Doughty, which is just completely useless here, so I just bolt them face and finish the job with Cyanos Draco, uh, so that is a pretty pretty easy win there against a mono black necro okay that is the match okay let's check out match five the last match the trophy match let's see how that went okay so one lander can't keep that and uh, yeah here i keep uh a two lander unfortunately i can't uh with thundering falls i can't uh, play sound drake on two but what i can do is play thundering falls on turn one and then play the breakout on turn two and hopefully find the full domain eventually uh that's pretty good okay so uh, last match i was playing against eldrazi eldrazi is just super super strong uh right now in my opinion one of the best decks in format if not the best at the moment uh, but there are too many different ways to play eldrazi so i don't i think that is partially the reason why it's not so evident because you can play tron you can play eldrazi ramp you can play through the breach ramp you can play the agro eldrazi you can play something in between uh, there's just so many ways to play it and uh, Okay, so we can see here that uh, again I hit a Psychic Fraud with Breakout and that's like just so super strong. I really like, like it. And again, second break. This I think this is like the sixth breakout uh, that I hit Frog with. And it's been really, really amazing. Uh, I shock in the Godless Shrine here. I wanted for this build, I wanted a second Black Source. Uh, but I was also missing a white source, while Golden Shrine is not ideal with Breakout and Territorial Kavu. Uh, I think uh, some kind of solution is needed, so uh, I added the Godless Shrine and I was pretty, it didn't bother me, it, I was pretty happy with it. And it, uh, it was my uh, second Black Shock and uh, second White Land and i i was miss, without it i was missing both so i was happy with that and um, 
but uh, still looking for of course possible solutions it's it's not ideal uh, it's definitely not ideal so um, i'm looking for other solutions too uh, but so far uh, i'm looking into lands like a stomping ground uh into i was previously looking for a hollow fountain but uh, now when i have a psychic frog in uh, it's like it's similar to fountain which is also bad but godless shine at least provides you second black source which can be crucial to sometimes combine your turns to play uh, combine your lands to play a psychic frog on turn two and then have full domain on turn three and double white and stuff like that okay so that can be relevant. Uh, here I find lands. I should have played my creature before. Probably. Or not. I don't know. It was just a pretty bad situation overall. I had to sacrifice two permanents to uh, take their Ulamog. And uh, yeah, that's, that was pretty bad. But my opponent also was able to kill the binding this turn. So that was a game over. For me in game one i had to win the next two to win the trophy so the quest was even harder since i lost game one of my trophy match and i had to mulligan on six but it is decent six and let's see the sideboarding plan which is uh, very simple and very effective in this matchup so three uh, i have seven one mana counter spells which are all relevant uh, against eldrazi so i got four stubborn denials and four consigned to memories and these cards are just so good against them and now uh, ragavan is also just very good against against eldrazi it's underrated uh, in the matchup definitely ragavan just is so much easier to win against them with ragavan Okay, so here now I put a uh, Flage in the yard, connect with Ragavan again. I'm able to play on curve and hold my counter spells. I got two stubborn denials here. Uh, if my opponent tries to remove one of my creatures or play the um, play the play the ring, play the all is dust. Uh, uh, one mana counters are just so very strong there. Uh, players uh, often tell me, but uh, yeah, like uh, uh, stubborn denial is not good against them. They play a lot of creatures. They actually on most lists only play like fourteen creatures, like uh, or twelve creatures. Even, uh, I think 12, 11, 12 is most often, and they play like uh, a sovereign. They play like uh, ulamogs, their devourers, the big creatures and uh, but it doesn't matter since what uh, you want that card to do is uh, simply just uh, counter the ring and counter the all is dust and counter Kozilek's command so these are three cards you have to counter to win it's very simple okay so uh, here i uh, have two mana for consigned to memory so i use consign there to uh, counter the totnot I got a full domain now and the play uh, Sino Jaco got another stubborn denial from the top. This means I can choose if I want to use stubborn denial or consign. So now I use consign on Totnuts here and uh, I still have a breakout plus stubborn denial for next turn. That is very, very powerful. And uh, yeah, uh, often Sino Jaco is key against Eldrazi since it doesn't die. Uh, uh, against all is dust and it doesn't uh, die to devourer of destiny that's also the reason why i bought out the leyland of the guild pact because it can make all your uh, it can make all your creatures uh, color including sino jaco so all is dust can kill a sino jaco that way which is actually pretty bad okay so uh, i uh, put land in the yard uh, discard a chain to the rocks for a counter on a uh, psychic frog this way i deal a six and I, I with this card i potentially have a lethal for the next turn opponent uh, goes devourer hand i think they probably forgot that my frog has hexproof or they didn't have any other place but i think they forgot about frog having hexproof from the scion so they devour didn't do anything and yeah i just had a win here so 
I just had to discard everything on a psychic frog and give it flying. So that's it. Don't forget you have giganta in situations like this. Uh, that's often like crucial. As you can see here, I had lethal plus stubborn denial backup. If my opponent had removal, I would have solution or because of the giganta. And you could see one of the games before where I win because I had Giganta to discard it on frogs. So I have a Giganta is even better in the frog builds since you can it can be immediately impactive like just put it in head, discard it immediately, get that counter which will be relevant. Okay, so I got from a nine here. I also have stubborn denial uh, if needed for protection so I got the win after losing the game one. In the trophy match I still got the trophy and 5-0 uh, league, uh, very strong showing for this deck and you could see just how powerful the breakout uh, into frog was. Uh, I, this build was just uh, so strong, break, hitting break, frog with breakout. I was very impressed by that and I tried other four color builds, builds with breakout but since Kawu is uh, in my opinion like the second best uh, two drop uh, hit with breakout there's just no point in not going full zoo uh, so I give up on some uh, four color uh, shadow style lists I had which is also possible but I think that this it will be just a worse version of uh, breakout zoo okay so that's it uh, in my opinion this is this build is among two best uh, zoo builds right now uh, definitely feels very strong and it in addition to the regular uh, zoo build from my channel a uh, couple of weeks ago uh, the list which i won the challenge with i think these two lists are the best ones uh, and this is the best alternate zoo list right now breakout is really strong was always strong was always strong before never lived uh, because it was missing kind of really uh, impactful uh, two drop hits but now we have psychic frog and i'm more and more because of this deck uh, because of my experience playing frog in this deck i'm leaning to playing psychic frog in uh, other versions of zoo 2 uh, since i was just so impressed by this card taking a two drop slot uh, so uh, i think it is a close call uh, at the moment between frog and bowmasters in all versions of zoo uh, in this version I want to be aggressive with the breakout and breakout works so much better with frog than with bowmaster so no um, thinking about it in this build but for regular version I was thinking between frog and bowmaster and it really uh, they're really similar both are very good and it kind of depends um, on your meta game I don't think the bowmaster is usually a good card for zoo overall but bowmaster was uh, a few weeks ago very very strong call in the meta game just killing those ocelot prides for free uh, killing the one toughness all the one toughness creature uh, being a very strong card against uh, the ring decks which uh, which are so present very present and sometimes the uh, the bowmaster can win those games on its own uh, it was a very very crucial card uh, in the meta game and uh, we'll have to wait and uh, see if it will remain like that in the future or something will change in favor of frog uh, frog tide is a very popular deck right now so a lot of people are starting to play fatal push instead of damage based removal or prismatic ending to be able to kill frogs so it uh, remains to be seen uh, which card will overall be uh, better in the long term um, but uh, once we get rid of the ring from the format in december i think then uh, definitely uh, won't, will stop thinking about bowmasters in all uh, zoo builds uh, but until then uh, psychic frog and bowmasters are really really competing for these slots right now and uh, yeah but for this version with the breakout there is just no uh, no question about frog being the best uh, best hit even better than kawu and kawu in my opinion was previously the best breakout hit in the game so there it is we have eight very strong hits 
uh, two inties which are in my opinion third best hit you can get with inti uh, um, also hits uh, helps you get put flage in the yard helps you get all the accidental card advantage from kavu and frog abilities so very very good synergy with inti in the deck and uh, that's it also can uh, make your ragawan 3-2 uh, out of the range of the bowmaster or make your valnekata 4-4 um put ferocious on online so uh yeah that's it um i think the deck is very good uh, very good options on the sideboard uh we have all that it's needed and uh in, often post board because of the construction of the sideboard post board games are often very different often you will have to trim to break out if you're bringing in the stubborn denials to find a good uh, balance between creature and non-creature spells i would recommend against uh, ever going below like uh, 19 20 creatures uh, in the main and in these uh, situations you are mostly trimming either one or two breakouts okay so that's it uh, that's all for today hope you like the video hope you like the gameplay i really really believe the psychic frog with haste is absolutely sick play and won me so much games so far it's really incredible okay so um friendly reminder for the end to click like click subscribe comment down in the video what how do you feel about breakout frog zoo build and uh, that's all for today thank you for watching this far goodbye